of our loving and ever-present God. Please be seated. It's hard to know where to begin today. This is a, this is a complicated little scripture going on. And it always, I always find it interesting when we swing from the Synoptic Gospels. The Synoptic Gospels are which Gospels? Matthew, Mark, Matthew. Hey, if I had to wake up and get out here this morning, so do you. Mark, Mark Luke, and Matthew. Yes. And they could be in a different order. It could be Mark, Matthew, and Luke. We're not real convinced, but here we are in John's Gospel. John's Gospel. And we are actually, we're, we're dealing with days here. Did you notice that uh, that there's, you know, on the next day, and then on the next day, and then 4 o'clock, etc., etc. And then, uh, this is right at the very beginning of the Gospel of John. You can see that as well as I can. This is right after we have that wonderful hymn. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And then we have this moment where John the Baptizer indicates that he is not the one, but the one that, that is coming is the one. The one who is coming is the Messiah. The one who is coming is the person who will anoint with what? With Holy the Holy Spirit. As opposed to what is it that John has been anointing with or baptizing with? Water. Thank you. Good. Yes. <laughs> On day one, after the, uh, the prayer of praise, we have the people, the, the leadership of the, of the temple cult, I, I use that word advisedly, I'm not talking about the folks that wait you know, for the comet to come by and that there's somebody out outside, I'm not talking about that kind of cult, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about the, the group of individuals who form the leadership around the temple. Uh, in John's Gospel, come out and they're talking to John and they're saying, well, who are you? And he says, I am a baptizer. Uh, who are you? Well, what is your purpose? Well, I'm here to make the, the road straight. I'm here to testify. Oh, that's a big word. I'm here to testify. I am not the one. Are you a prophet? <coughs> no, he says. Then who are you, they ask. We must give an answer to those who sent us, those people in the leadership position. This is on day one. And he says, I am a voice crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. Beg your pardon? Right out of Isaiah. Right out of Isaiah. Absolutely. So that's day one. And day two, John sees Jesus coming. And that's where we pick up the story. And we have this day day two and day three, and then there's day four, which is when Nathaniel comes out, and you all remember this, it's one of my favorite lines, okay, somebody says, well, this is Jesus from Nazareth, and Nathaniel says, can anything good come from Nazareth? That's a great line. Better Nathaniel said that than Jim Crow. <laughs> and then, guess what, two days later, so that's one, one two, four, and two, that's six days. Six days uh, in all of this. We have the wedding in Cana. So we're at the very beginning of Jesus' ministry, and there's all of this going on. We've come from Matthew's Gospel, where Jesus is baptized, and the cup out of the water he comes, and the dove alights on his head and says, Here is my son, in whom I am well pleased. We have this language here where John is saying, I saw the dove landing on his head. Here is the Son of God. And John's disciples, John's disciples are wondering about this. And, and he says to them, this is the Lamb of God. This is the Lamb of God. And they go and follow him. They go and see what he says. Where are you going? And Jesus, Jesus asked him, what do you want? What, what are you looking for? It's all very interesting. <laughs> And what do you suppose this is all about? What do you suppose this is all about? Jim, this is why we ask you to be the rector here. Because <laughs> we don't, we don't want to do this. It's your job. 
There was a, I, just a little aside, there was a moment when it looked like I might actually not be here today. There were plans to go down in, uh, to North Carolina and see my mother. And uh, I had asked Linda to look at the gospel. And, and when I changed my plans, I said, well, I'm really sorry that you've, you know, that you've invested all this time. And she told me today, she said, do, I really need, do you really need to be sorry that I was actually looking at scripture? <laughs> I'm so busted. <laughs> Here's the Lamb of God. They followed Him. What are you looking for? They said, Rabbi, we, you are the teacher. Where are you staying? He said, come and see. They came and saw where He was staying. And they stayed with Him. And we have the beginning of the naming of the, of the disciples in John's Gospel. John's Gospel, you remember John's Gospel, does not really worry too much about the number 12 in the discipleship. He does worry a little bit about uh, Simon, because Simon is uh, Peter, and uh, is often in conflict with the beloved disciple in John. That's how oh, good he just gets going, and he just doesn't know when to stop, does he? But they say, we have found the Messiah. We have found the Messiah. So you now have the declaration of John to the leadership of Israel. And you have, the, you have John declaring to, to uh, his disciples that this is the Messiah, this is the Lamb of God, this is the teacher. And then you have them declaring that this is the Messiah, this is the Son of God, this is the teacher, this is the <coughs> Lamb of God. If we were in court, back 2,000 years ago, if we were in court 2,000 years ago, these folks would be witnesses. They would be witnesses. And they would be credible witnesses that this is indeed the Son of God. One of the interesting things about, well, living in the 21st century for me, is that sometimes when I get up in the morning and I realize that yes indeed there is God and there is Jesus Christ, what is also useful <coughs> for me to remember is that I am neither of those or both. I am neither Jesus, God. I am not God. And John the Baptist is saying, I am not the Messiah. <coughs> I am not the Son of God. He is. And there we are. And there we are. We're at the we're in the season of the Epiphany. When the when the word comes down from God, we are at the season of the Epiphany when the word comes down from God, and we are to wonder, I think, who is this person? How do we address this person? What is this person in our lives? What difference does this person make for us? How do we think of this individual if and when we do think of this individual in the 21st century? Who is he? And what does he mean to us? And that, I think, is where we're supposed to go. I think that's what we're supposed to do. I think we're supposed to look at this individual and, and go, are you, the, are you the teacher? Well, yes. Are you the son of God? Yes. Well, what does that mean? <coughs> what does that mean to you? And how does it make a difference in your life? How does it make a difference in my life? When we go outside the door, how does it make a difference in the world? He was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. He came into his <coughs> own and his own received him not. But to as many as received him. Uh, It's a cold day. It's windy and it's gray. 
when you go outside in that windy and gray day, who is Jesus to you? Who is Jesus to you?